it's Monday, and uh, yeah, I haven't been feeling too happy. Different things going on in my life that I will not disclose. Um, yeah. So I've been feeling pretty bummed, actually. My friend asked me, what are you into these days? And I respond, hello. These days I'm gaining weight, not exercising, not meditating, my room is messy. I'm eating a bunch of junk, and I'm depressed most of the time. I want to die. Do you want to die with me? And she says, I'm very sad to hear that. What is things you want to die? I want to live with you, Jimmy. Why do you want to die? Can you tell me the reason? Then I say, because I don't want to care. So it's true, I haven't been feeling well these days. I've been feeling pretty miserable. And the reason I think is because, is actually because, is actually a good reason, a positive reason, is because I sense that with the project, with the progress that I'm doing in my project, I'll soon get out of this rut. So I'm kind of just relaxing my morals because I know that it's going to, things are going to change. Things are going to change for the better and possibly permanently. You see the smile? That is an actual smile. It's a genuine smile. So, this is just kind of like the last dark hour before the sunrise. It's no big deal at all. I'm feeling pretty miserable and I'm being pretty lazy, but things are about to change. I just know it. I just printed out a proto draft. I'm going to review it. Yeah. Looks good. So what I'm planning to do now is to just look over the notes and just uh, pay very good attention to each concept. Uh, look over the, uh, the proto draft and uh, just pay attention to each of the concepts. Uh, see if there's anything that's um, not in its place. Because uh, you know when you do things too hastily, you put things in the wrong place sometimes. And just to put it there, just to get it over with. And also see if there's any overlaps between concepts. So that's what I'm doing right now, just going over the notes. And as I'm going, and as I'm doing that, I'm making it everything more definite, more thorough, more tidy. So I'm also taking part in learning, learning each of the concepts all over again, and more, and making everything more definite. So I'm, as I'm looking through the list, I'm realizing that, uh, you know, every section, well, when I started doing the 10 elements, I only wanted to, to uh, I was only focusing on two things, addressing the triggers and the responses. But as I was writing things down, I noticed that there were other things that were coming up, 
other things that I wanted to write down that were not triggers and that were not responses to those triggers. These include, uh, and if you can look at the list, it says uh, first, uh, first element is continuous renewal. Continuous renewal, and it has a few sections. I haven't counted them, maybe six. The first section is define. So the definition of continuous renewal. There, you need an explanation to know what continuous renewal is. Uh, then is the triggers. Then is the uh, justification. And the justification comes in two forms. You justify it by its own virtue, by why it makes sense on its own. And then you justify it by the effects, the, you know, the effects that you get from doing, from performing it. You know, the benefits of it. The benefits justify, or if you want to think of it, the end justify the means. And then after, so definition, triggers, justification, which is virtue by virtue of itself and the effects, by virtue of its effects. Then it's a procedure. And the procedure comes in continuous practice and trigger response. So, those are how many? One, definition, triggers, justification of virtue and effect, and procedure, continuous practice, and triggers response. So there's six sections. And now I'm noticing, as I'm focusing on trigger response, I notice that justification also affects the pattern what happens. But now there's the question, where in the dynamic does justification fit? It's not just trigger response, justification is in there somewhere. So there's three possibilities. There's trigger, justification, and then response. So you get the trigger and then you have to justify the, the response to it. It's a possibility. Or you uh, or there's trigger response and there's the justification that overarches between those two and that or there's justification and because of the justification there's the trigger and a response so I'm analyzing these three possibilities or you know if you want to if you want to be uh, if you want to exhaust all the possibilities there could be trigger response and the justification at the end after you respond to it but um, I'm not sure if that makes too much sense in uh, in my experience At this point of the video, you might be wondering, what the heck is going on? What's with all the uh, movements? Why am I behaving like this uh, as I'm looking through the notes? And the thing is, is that uh, the, the, one of the reasons why I made this video is, is so that you can get uh, an idea of of the changes that that happen it's because of the content that is included in in the uh, in my proto draft. Um, one of the reasons why I waited to go over the notes until I had a, a video of it was because I knew that there was going to be a change, and the change th th is is supposed to be a drastic. It's supposed to be a direct change. Um, um, and really, what what is reflecting is that. As 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 you are beginning to get new ideas, as you are beginning to understand things, there is an emotional change. There is a change in mentality. You know, with new knowledge comes a new mentality, and with the new mentality comes a new behavior, and you see the world differently. Basically, what that, that's that's the change that is going on in this video. Um, of course, uh, it, th this can be this can be very easily understood. Um, you know, if, if somebody says uh, something inspirational, if, if you hear an inspirational quote that makes you feel better, that makes you feel elated, that makes you feel ecstatic, or if, some, if or somebody says something that makes you feel terrible, you know, it's these ideas that affect how you feel and affect the way you behave and affect the way you are. As I'm going through the project, the reason why these movements are so wild are just first of all because I'm alone and because you know I don't really mind um, acting you know moving around like this when when nobody can see me so there's the lack of inhibition going on there um, but also because you know the, 
the, the whole purpose of the project is to is to be able to get all these ideas and to condense them into one. Um, and I will explain that into another video of how of how usually when we read a book, we you know when we read some uh, devotional or or something that uh, something that is supposed to inspire us, we get random ideas and they affect us randomly. But then when we walk out of church it, or when we put the book down, we forget everything. Right. The purpose of this project is to be is to have that level of inspiration at all times, um, and to to just live in that inspiration, live in that level of inspiration. Yeah, that's that's that was one of the purposes of this video. So you could see the change from me uh, from me be, being miserable uh, to to and 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 how when I just by going over the notes the the project is not even complete but just by going over the notes just by reminding myself of the system there's already cha there's already a change beginning to happen within my emotional self within my state of mind and that is the whole purpose of the project uh, but the project uh, once it's complete what it's supposed to do is it's so I'm supposed to be able to hold on to this inspiration continuously and maybe even permanently, if everything is set up the right way, if all the parameters and if all the limits are set up the right way, I'm supposed to be able to, to be inspired continuously and permanently throughout my life. To have this inspiration n n n not only be a practice, but have it be a part of my identity. That is the purpose of the, this system. Now, uh, I, I just want to make it clear that um, although although it may look like it, there there is no demonic possession going on. I have full control of all my uh, of all my movements, of all my behavior. Um, basically, it's just a reflection of of, of how I feel and, and what I feel. Uh, the and uh, and also uh, s some of these movements. I don't show many of this in this video, but some of these movements are actually tools that I use to maneuver in my thoughts, maneuver within my thoughts. Uh, it's sometimes because, you know, the world of thoughts, the world inside your head is so so subtle sometimes and sometimes is, is so fleeting that it's hard to keep thoughts, it's hard to keep track of thoughts. Uh, you're thinking of one thing and then two seconds later you forget and you cannot think of that thought that you had and is it's so fleeting that sometimes it goes away so completely that you ever that, that you forget that you're thinking about something so some of these movements are actually are actually tools um, that I use in order to keep track of thoughts in order to manipulate them just like I use my hands to communicate um, just like people use words in order to to remember things you know you may think something but if you write it down you remember it more if you say you remember it more I kinda do the same thing but some of these thoughts don't have words they're just like kind of patterns inside one's head and so the best thing that you can do the most immediate thing and the fastest way to keep track of those thoughts is by by acting them out and so um, so that that's what these movements are sometimes they they are me trying to keep track of thoughts through body movements and sometimes it's just excitement um, and me expressing that excitement so uh, the one that I'm analyzing first is the justification trigger response this one makes sense because uh, the trigger kinda needs a background uh, set definition the word trigger means that is uh, it's in, in its definition it's a backdrop it has a backdrop of explanation something that's being triggered when you have the word trigger what's you have to ask yourself what is being triggered and what identifies the trigger in order to identify the trigger uh, you need something that is triggering so uh, triggers are a description of something going wrong and it trigger something that tells you that you need to fix something so therefore even before the trigger has been activated before the trigger has occurred there is already a description of the way things are supposed to be 
there's a description of how things are supposed to be and the possibility of falling out of that and the falling out of that criteria that's what causes the trigger um, which is supposed to trigger you going back to that criteria of how it's supposed to be so if I were to rearrange all these sections within each element it would be uh, just thinking about them all there's a virtue and um, and because of virtue there's a continuous practice procedure and there's the trigger and uh, when there's trigger there's trigger response so there's trigger response one after the other and then there's the effect uh, which justifies it backwards because you're justifying the means by the end so it comes at the end so the first is the element, you introduce the element, then there's define, there's this justification by virtue, and because there's a justification by virtue, there's a continuous practice that you need to perform. Then if something goes wrong, that's a trigger. And after something gets triggered, there's a trigger response. And then the last thing is the uh, is justified, the whole thing is justified by the effect. So those are the six, the six areas for each element, the six sections.